Having a safe place to call home and a roof over your head has always been important for Michiganders, especially over the last 18 months. That's why at the start of the pandemic, I implemented a statewide eviction moratorium and diversion programs to keep Michiganders in their homes. Yet while so many Michiganders have used this program to get back on their feet, we know there are still some families who need help to pay their bills going forward. This year, I proudly signed legislation that provides even more funding to the Michigan State Housing Development Authority for the COVID Emergency Rental Assistance Program. This program is here to help Michigan families and individuals maintain their housing stability and financial security. There are ample funds available to help those who are struggling to pay their rent. And now is the time for Michigan renters to take advantage of our rental assistance program to maintain safe, secure housing. I encourage each of you to go to michigan.gov slash Sarah to find more information on who can apply, how to apply, or to find a local service provider that can assist you. Having a place to call home is about so much more than a roof over your head. It's about stability and dignity. An affordable, accessible home can be a launching pad to chase opportunities right here in Michigan. Go to michigan.gov slash Sarah to secure the help you need today. Wow. You know you're in the right place when the governor of the state of Michigan kicks off your event. Thank you, Governor Whitmer. Hi, and welcome everyone to the State of Michigan Housing Development Authority in partnership with DTE and Detroit Public Television. If you are here for this inaugural virtual housing and assistance fair, then you are in the right place. Hi, my name is Van Adams of MISTER's outreach team, and I'm honored to serve as your moderator. As Michigan's housing experts, in deploying housing resources. Mr. is pleased to have this unprecedented opportunity to partner with DTE, one of the largest energy related businesses in the state of Michigan, reaching over 3 million customers. And because access to you is so important, we've also partnered with the infamous Detroit Public Television so that we can expand our reach to get you the information you need and deserve. The Detroit Public Television is Michigan's most watched public station, regularly viewed by some 2 million people in Southeast Michigan and throughout Canada. So for the next hour, without a doubt, you want to stick around. You're going to hear from some of our leading experts that will assist you or someone you know from eviction, foreclosure and utility shutoffs, and so much more. We also want to welcome our social media audience and those of you joining us from the Detroit Public Television Network. So you might want to reach out to a friend and have them join us. This is gonna be an interactive event. So that means that you that have joined us via Zoom will have the opportunity to ask your question. As you can see on this slide, just click on the Q and A icon at the bottom of your screen and you can type your question there. And for those of you that can stick around, we're even going to have a special after event Q and A segment where some of our premier leaders will be on hand to answer some of your important questions. You know, it's been said that unprecedented times require unprecedented leaders. And in just a moment, you will hear from our chief housing solutions officer who will tell us about an important program called the COVID Emergency Relief Program. So here to tell us more is Kelly Rose. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you, Van. Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Rose. I'm the Chief Housing Solutions Officer for MISHTA and today I'm gonna to tell you about our COVID Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Uh, first off, where you can go for more information on the program is you can go to michigan.gov slash C-E-R-A uh, to get more information than what I cover today. 
So first off, going into tenant eligibility, who is eligible for this program? So Sarah tenants can be up to 80% of area median income. And what that means in Wayne County is a family of four can make up to about $62,000 and be eligible for the program. Households also have to experience some sort of COVID economic hardship. Um, and this is required in the federal regulations for this program. Um, so someone needs to have had either unemployment, decreased income, increased expenses, like it could be as simple as you had to buy uh, PPE during the pandemic, or you had increased childcare expenses because schools were, were closed, um, or some other sort of financial hardship. Um, so one of those needs to be documented in your, in your application. And you also have to be at risk of homelessness or housing instability. And this is documented by either being behind on your rent or your utilities. Um, it doesn't have to be both, but you could be behind on either of those to be qualified to get assistance in the program. Next slide, please. So the rental assistance benefit. Um, for people who are under 50% of area median income, they can get 12 months of assistance for their rental arrears, and then three months of future rental assistance for a total of 15 months of rental assistance. And that's the most that's allowed within the federal funding. And then if you're a little higher income in the 50 to 80% AMI bracket, you'll get up to a combined 13 months of total rental assistance. And if, if you had less uh, arrears that needed to be covered initially, say example, you only had you were only three months behind in your rent, you could get three months of, of rental arrears covered, three months of future rental assistance, and then you can reapply after that first three months of rental assistance has, has gone by. If you still need it to preserve your housing stability, you can reapply and get more rental assistance. Uh, the rent is limited to 150% of fair market rent. And an example for that in Wayne County is a two bedroom rent of up to $1,587. Um, so that doesn't mean that you would be disqualified for the program if your rent was over that, but the program would just pay up to that amount um, towards uh, your arrears or future rental assistance. And we also reimburse landlords for up to $400 of late fees and $150 of court costs. Um, and in most situations, um, the payments do go directly to the landlord. So if the landlord is participating in the program and providing us uh, the required paperwork, the payments do go directly to the landlord. But if your landlord is not willing to participate in the program or just for some reason doesn't apply, we can fund tenants directly. So um, if, if your landlord doesn't participate, that's okay. We can still fund you directly. Next slide, please. We can also help you with internet assistance. Um, so we've structured this pretty simply to be a $300 internet stipend. So essentially $50 a month for six months, but um, we're, we're just making it a flat $300 so we don't have to try to unbundle your internet bills. And in most cases, this payment is made directly to the tenant. Um, in some cases, if the internet service provider is taking direct payment, then the payment might be go going directly to your internet service provider. Next slide, please. So for the utility assistance benefit, this is another key aspect to the program uh, to helping people with their utilities. So this program can pay for electricity, any type of home heating, water, sewer, and trash. Um, but we only pay trash if it's bundled with a water or sewer bill or some other municipal bill like that. And you can see that we've broken down the benefit by the number of people in your household. So for example, if you're a three person household, you can get up to $2,000 of utility assistance and let's say, for example, that your, um, your arrears and your utilities was only $1,000, you could get $500 towards a credit um, towards future bills to be placed on your account. And if you're very low income and under the 50% AMI range, you can get an additional $500 if, if it's needed to fully pay all of your arrearages. And these payments do go directly to your utility provider. Next slide, please. The application process. So as I said before, our website for this program is michigan.gov slash C-E-R-A, standing for COVID Emergency Rental Assistance. And you can go to that website um, to click on our green Apply Now button um, to start the application process. And either the tenant or the landlord can initiate the application. So we recommend that before applying, um, the tenant and the landlord talk to each other um, to exchange their email addresses if they don't have them already, because that is needed to start the application process and to let the other party know that you are applying for the program. 
Paper applications also can be submitted if the internet application process just doesn't fit your situation. So you can also go to our website to download the paper applications, and we do hope they have those in a number of different languages. Imminent eviction cases are being prioritized for processing, so we really want to make sure that we're avoiding as many evictions as possible in this program. Um, so if you are going through the eviction process, um, we encourage you apply right away. Um, please don't wait. Um, that's, that's the biggest thing. Even if you're not in the eviction stages yet, please apply for the program um, because it helps the earlier the process you know, we can get to you, the earlier the better. We will have a public dashboard that will be launched later this month. Um, and you'll be able to find that on the michigan.gov slash Sarah website, where it will go county by county and you'll be able to see how many applications have been received in your area, how many have been processed, as well as how much funding has been deployed in your area. And as of yesterday, we've approved over $152 million for payment for over 23,000 households. Um, but we have almost a billion dollars for this program. So we're excited that we can serve over 100,000 households with this program. Uh, so we encourage you, please apply um, right away. Um, and our service providers all across the state, because we are doing this program through local nonprofits, um, are working as quickly as possible um, to get your applications funded. Um, and you can find the service provider that's processing applications in your area by going to michigan.gov slash Sarah and looking at our Sarah contact list. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, providing this important information. As you know, so many people across the state of Michigan are in dire need of this uh, CIRA program. We have a few questions uh, from the chat. Uh, and I do want to say to our audience that we're going to uh, take as many of your questions as we can on the back end during our special Q&A uh, segment. So you want to stick around for that. But let me just get to one question here. Uh, Kelly, uh, with, and the person wants to know, how long typically is the process? You know, you have some folks that uh, have court dates coming up and they're just anxious. They're just pulling their hair out. So what, what can they expect once they uh, complete an application? Yes, so we are prioritizing eviction cases. Um, so um, in uh, Detroit, so United Community Housing Coalition is processing uh, the eviction cases and they're working to get those processed as quickly as possible and working very closely with 36 district court um, and the legal services providers um, in the area to try to make sure that they're really working as a, co as a cohesive team uh, to make sure that evictions are being prevented. Um, really the application time kind of can vary because we are prioritizing eviction cases. Um, so on average, it can take between six to eight weeks in general for applications to be processed, but some of them will be processed a little faster, some will take a little longer. Thank you. And, and, and what should a person do if they're, if they're waiting? Um, uh, we had one of our uh, questions uh, that they completed their application like on July 1st and haven't heard from anyone. What, uh, what should they be doing while they're waiting? Well, they can, you can check your application status on our website by entering your SARA number. So that's the six digit number that you get when you have applied for the program, your date of birth and your name. So you'll be able to check your application status to see if it's in submitted status or if it's under review or processing. Um, and there's a little description of what that means on the website. Um, if you have questions, you can go to the SARA contact list. Um, and contact the service provider that's um, you know, the lead for your area and give them a call um, to be able to check um, on your application. Um, one thing that we do recommend is that people are checking the email that they used in their application. You know, make sure they're checking that email every couple days because the service providers will be contacting you via email if they need additional documents or questions. Um, so please make sure you're checking that email um, and that will help the application process go quicker if they're reaching out to you for information. All right, great. And one, one last question, Kelly, before we go to our uh, next video. Uh, and this is a person wanted to know if they, if they are handicapped, uh, are, will, will Sarah uh, assist them uh, as a part of that process? 
Absolutely. Um, so if, if you have a disability and you're looking for a different way to access the program, uh, please call uh, the service provider that's serving your county or, or you know, there's specific ones for Detroit um, to talk to them. And also, if you're in Detroit, Wayne Metro is offering um, navigation appointments to really, you know, just step by step walk people through the application process um, to try to make sure that that's as easy as possible. So if you need a navigation appointment, um, and you're just you're, you're having a little bit of trouble with the online application, um, you can you can reach out via that Sarah contact list to get connected with them. All right. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, you've heard it, everybody, from Kelly Rose, the Chief Housing Solutions Officer for Michigan State Housing Development Authority. And we hope you'll be able to stick around for a few minutes uh, uh, to answer some more questions during our special Q&A. At this time, we're going to uh, segue into our next uh, piece, which is a uh, video uh, from one of our citizens. COVID impacted me a lot because like everyone else, I had no idea that we were getting ready to go into a pandemic. So I had resigned from my job um, to stay in compliance with the court order, which left me like just at home stuck. That's what it did. So it impacted me tremendously. It made me feel stuck. It made me feel depressed. You know, I'm in the house with no money. You know, bills piling up on me. Yeah, yeah, I, I was very stressed out. <laughs> I didn't receive any benefits from uh, unemployment because the way I had resigned from my job, I had actually resigned. So I wasn't entitled to any benefits. So I didn't receive anything. Well, I, I, let, me re, let me rephrase that. I received money from them for a small, amount of, a small amount of time. And then they cut it off because they said that I did not qualify due to the way I left my job. So it left me without any relief at all. One day watching the news, you know, like I usually do, and uh, a number came across the, the television screen. So when I caught the number, that's when I found out that actually Sarah was affiliated with Wayne Metro, and I ended up getting some assistance there. Yeah, so from the news. Sarah was a blessing to me because I reached out to them and I explained my situation. I was completely honest. So I did let Sarah know that I did not have any income coming in, but um, I was behind on certain bills, like my light bill, my gas bill, but I was not behind in rent. But I did not have any income coming in to make further rent payments in the future. So what Sarah did was they 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 helped me tremendously, you know, with my bills. I'm relieved now because because of Sarah, they actually put me in a position to where only thing I have to do now is land that perfect job that I want. So when I move forward in life, I'm actually in a position to actually prosper on this. So what they did was they pay all of my utilities for me. They uh, I received a lift voucher so that I can get around. I received food vouchers and they paid my rent for me a couple of months in advance. So I actually don't have to pay rent until October. Moving forward, I'll, I'll everything will be all lined up and it's all because of Sarah. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for this program, I, I'd be probably homeless, you know, um, bills piled up on me. Thank, thankfully, the, uh, the, the water company wasn't shutting off water, but the lights and gas would definitely be off right now if it wasn't for Sarah. I'll definitely be uh, one of those people uh, hoping that the rent moratorium don't lift, you know, because of Sarah. So they actually put me in a great, great position, and I am so very thankful, and I thank God for this program, and I actually pray. Fantastic. Well, before we go to our next segment, we see that all of the chats uh, are coming in. And as we uh, mentioned up front, if you have a question, instead of using the chat mechanism, we want you to use the Q and A button. All right, use that Q and A button and we'll try to prioritize your question. Well, you certainly want to uh, get your pen and paper out for the information about to come your way uh, from our great partner, DTE. Please welcome DTE's Manager of Energy Assistance, Ms. Sakina Howard. Hello, Sakina. Hello, Van, and thank you for the introduction. I want to apologize up front for my technical difficulties and my camera not being on, but I am pleased to be here today 
to talk about DTE's low income self sufficiency program to share information about state emergency relief. I'm going to talk about home heating credits and other energy assistance programs so definitely happy to be here today. One of the messages I'm really hoping to convey is that there is help for virtually everyone who is struggling with their energy bills. If there's nothing else people take away today, I hope it's that. We don't wanna see anyone go without the power or heat that they need. And that's why we're urging customers to reach out to us really as soon as they think they might not be able to pay their upcoming bills. There's really two ways. It's either call us at 800-477-4747 and we wanna talk about your situation, talk to you about the program that's right for you. And the sooner you contact us, it's really makes more opportunities available to you. And then the alternative is for customers to call 211. They can not only be connected for assistance for energy, but also childcare or housing assistance or a number of other services. So 211 has been a great partner to DTE, especially when it comes to connecting households with our low income self sufficiency program. So just want to encourage people to use one of these two ways to get help. Next slide please. All right, so I said I would talk about state emergency relief and I want to make it known that this is a program that's offered all year long. It's designed really to help those households that are normally able to make ends meet but maybe need a little bit of extra help, especially if some emergencies arise. Um, what's important to know is that the household has to meet the income qualifications. So really at or below 150% of the federal poverty guidelines. And just to give you an example, a family of four can make up to $39,000 per year and still qualify or meet the income qualifications for our, a state emergency relief program. Um, if there's any questions that folks have about the guidelines, you're trying to understand kind of where you're, where you fit, you can go to dteenergy.com slash help and you can select low income programs and we have a table listed there that'll help you see where you fall in terms of the income guidelines. One of the things that I really want to emphasize and it's often misunderstood and I even saw it coming up in the chat is that you do not need a disconnect notice from DTE to receive this assistance. You can still apply for an SCR. And even if you're on DTE shutoff protection plan, you can apply for an SCR. So I hope that um, everyone understands that. Another thing I wanted to point out, when you apply for an SCR, DTE works with the state and we put a hold on your account and that protects you from being disconnected while your application is being processed. So just wanna make sure that everyone knows that as well. As far as applying for the SCR, if we can go to the next slide, the best way to do that is to search the internet or Google My Bridges SCR and you'll find that page. It looks like the one that you can see on the screen there. But you can also call DTE, call us at 1-800-477-4747 and we can help you apply for the SCR. We have trained navigators who can walk you through that process and we're happy to do that. And once you apply, if you end up being eligible, we will work with the state and we will apply those funds directly to your DT account. We partner on that part. One of the reasons that this SCR is so important is because of this program I'm gonna talk about next. If you apply for an SCR, you likely qualify for this LSP program. And what's great about the LSP program is it really helps households come up with an affordable payment plan that works for them. The LSP program stands for our Low Income Self-Sufficiency Program. And it is a program that really takes into consideration uh, your income and your energy usage and your payments, if you're a customer that has both gas and electric, won't be higher than 130 per month. It might be lower depending on your situation, but no more than $130 per month for a 24 month period. And then each month as you pay your bill, part of your past due balance gets forgiven. You know, we wipe that out with other funds. So 
Just wanna make sure people understand that. Another great benefit of LSP is that you're protecting yourself from being disconnected while you're on the plan, you're preventing late payment charges. In addition to that, households who participate are receiving self-sufficiency training from experts. Um, but again, you need that SER first, and then on the next page, you'll see that we partner with several human service agencies that can assist you with getting enrolled in LSP. Everyone from the Salvation Army to the Heat and Warmth Fund, you can see all of them listed there. You go to one of these agencies, they'll review your income and help you apply for that. They'll look at your energy usage and really determine if you're a household that's eligible for our program. You can go directly to our website, dteenergy.com slash LSP and click on how to apply if you're trying to get in contact with one of these agencies. And as an alternative, you can still call 211 and they can connect you as well. So if we go to the next slide, I wanna talk a little bit about another type of assistance, home heating credits. Um, this might provide some savings or relief for households who qualify as well. And the home heating credits are based on your household income, the number of exemptions you claim and your home's actual heating. And so these credits really um, come when you, when you fill out your state taxes each year, you can also apply for a state tax credit. And for Ella, as far as eligibility goes, it's for households that are below 100, at or below 110% of the federal poverty guidelines. So just as an example, the maximum income for a household of four again, would be $28,820. One of the things I really wanna emphasize here is the deadline. Uh, to get this home heating credit for this current year, you have to apply by September 30th. So you don't wanna miss that date, it's right around the corner. And if you need to apply for this credit, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can contact your local United Way, or you can also contact a local chapter of the Accounting Aid Society and they can assist you with filing for that credit. Next slide, please. So energy assistance, efficiency assistance, another great way to help reduce some of your energy usage and ultimately reduce your monthly bill. Maybe that's by using less air conditioner or maybe replacing some of your less efficient appliances um, if you're in the market to replace a large appliance like furnaces or hot water tanks, this might be a program for you. And this program is based on an income level at or below 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. So staying with a four person household, the most income you could make in this case is $52,000. So again, just to give you an idea, and you can go to our website here at dteenergy.com slash eeassistance, and you can learn more about that program. Another program I wanna talk about next, um, our home energy consultations. If you're not familiar with those, another great way to reduce your usage. Um, you can get a free energy consultation where either we come to your home or an energy specialist walks through with you virtually and they identify ways that you can save energy. There's a whole list on the screen of products that you might receive as a part of that consultation. I know customers have received programmable thermostats, um, light bulbs, new shower heads, really depends on your situation. And again, these consultations and the products are free and they're available to all of our customers, whether you have electric or gas service. So I would encourage everyone, if you haven't had a consultation, to call us, the number is on the screen, or you can go to our website, dtenergy.com slash HEC. Another program I wanna talk about, the last one here is our appliance recycling program. Another way to really um, work on energy efficiency if you're looking to replace a refrigerator or a freezer, great news is that we'll pick up the old one from you and you can also get a $50 rebate. So just one other way to save a little bit of money. You can check it out at dteenergy.com slash recycle rebates and they will get that rebate to you. Um, really, as I start to close, 
I want to emphasize here how to contact us by calling us at 1-800-477-4747. But what I really want to emphasize is that the sooner you call and get help, uh, the more opportunities there are to help you. Um, the other way you can contact us is to call 211 and they can connect you um, to really get you help with not only your energy bill or other services. So I will conclude my remarks there. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak and I'm looking forward to uh, answering any questions after. I'll turn it over to you, Van. Well, thank you so much, Sakina. Um, that was a uh, plethora of uh, services uh, for people, a lot of new things that I learned tonight. Uh, but I did want to get to one of the questions that we have uh, from a person who says that they're homeless and, and uh, have a high DTE bill. Uh, what can a person do about a situation like that? Well, Ben, the first thing I would say is to contact us um, if they're able to uh, get access to a phone at that phone number, 1-800-477-4747. Um, and we can talk about their, your, I assume the question is how do we help them address their past due bill? First thing they gotta do is contact us. All right, great. And they will contact you at 1-800-477-4747? Yes. All right, great. Well, we hope you can stick around Sakina because uh, I'm sure there are some more questions. I just couldn't get to them all right now, but we'll, we'll come back to you and uh, DTE. Thank you again. Uh, now we're going to take a brief uh, pause to take your pulse and to get some feedback from you. Here to take us further is Fred Durhall III. What do you have for us, Fred? Uh, thank you very much, Ben, uh, for that wonderful introduction. My name is Fred Durhall. I'm the community liaison for Mischa. And as we speak about community, as we speak about some of the resources that you have heard tonight, one of the most important tools that we can have is the feedback from our community, from our citizens. And in order to do that, uh, tonight we are going to take your pulse. We're gonna see what issues are important to you through this survey. If you have Zoom, you can participate in this five question survey. So we will start with our first question. Have you have faced uh, evictions in the last year? Yes or no? You can answer via Zoom. Okay, some of our first results have come in. 30% of callers on a Zoom call have have faced evictions in the last year, and 70% have not faced evictions within the last year. We'll move to our second question. Are you struggling with your monthly energy bill? Again, you can answer yes or no via Zoom. Seventy-seven percent of people on the call today said they have struggled with their monthly energy bill, and twenty-three percent have said no. This is useful information that we will relay back to DT. Question number three: Do you spend more than thirty percent of your income on rent or other housing costs like mortgages, taxes, insurance, etc.? You can answer via Zoom, you can click yes or no. Results are in from, th from our third question. 87% of folks on the call said they spend more than 30% of their income on rent or other housing costs like mortgages, taxes, and insurance. 13% said no. It's an overwhelming number. 
Question number four, do you rent or own your home? This helps us at MISHTA identify renters who are on the call or homeowners who are on the call. Sixty-five percent of participants on the call said that they rent their home, while thirty-five percent of participants on the call today own their own homes. And finally, are you familiar with DTE Energy's energy assistant programs? Yes or no? Sixty-three percent said yes, and thirty-seven percent said no about the familiarity of DTE Energy's energy assistance programs. Well, we're glad we can provide that information today. And so, with that, that'll conclude our poll survey. We appreciate you answering these questions and taking this survey. This will help us gain the data that we need to be able to provide more resources and information to you as citizens and assist you in the best way possible. With that, I'll turn it back over to Van. Hey, thank you, Fred, uh, for taking the pulse of our audience today. Uh, before we move on, let me just say to all of our social media uh, audience, those of you that are on Facebook, if you have a question, just put it in the comments section, and we'll have someone there that can make sure we can get your pertinent questions. So put your questions in the comments section. All right, not a day goes by without hearing something about the real estate market. Now more than ever before, quality and affordable housing is a key component of our community and neighborhood stability. Next up to tell us more about how you can take advantage of some of the housing programs that the Michigan State Housing Development Authority has to offer is the Director of Home Ownership, Ms. Mary Townley. Welcome, Mary. Thanks uh, for that introduction. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about a new program that is coming to Michigan. It is not active yet, but it will be in the next few months. And it's called the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund. This uh, program was established under the uh, uh, American Rescue Plan of 2021. And the program uh, was allocated $10 billion for the entire US. Michigan was awarded $242.8 million. And it must be used to provide assistance to homeowners that are struggling with past due or delinquent mortgage payments past due in delinquent property taxes, and also uh, assistance for utilities, similar to what the SARA program is going to be offering or is offering. The homeowner also must have a COVID-related hardship uh, after January 21st, 2020. So uh, individuals are eligible for the program if their home is owner-occupied. It's located in the state of Michigan. Um, they have a hardship associated, associated with COVID, uh, and there are some income limitations with the program. Um, household income cannot exceed 150% of the area median income. And in Wayne County, for a family of two, that's coming in at $96,000. We also must focus on uh, individuals that have 100% area median income. So we're asked to focus 60% of our funding for that uh, income group. 100% um, area median income for a family of two is 79,900. Um, we will also be focusing and doing um, a better push or marketing of this program 
for government loans and also individuals that are um, uh, socially disadvantaged. Um, we are going to target with some grassroots marketing. Uh, we'll have uh, television, print, social, and digital media available as soon as the program is ready to launch. So that will direct you on how to apply. The assistance is also going to be capped at $25,000. Uh, we will use those funds to remedy the delinquency. And if uh, there are funds uh, still available as part of that 25,000, we will pay future payments, three months of future payments. So the program launch right now, um, we have finished our public comments uh, that was done at the end of July. Uh, we have recently submitted our state plan to US Treasury in Washington, and we're patiently waiting for their feedback. Uh, once we receive uh, approval of our program, we will uh, complete our IT system setup, and then we will launch the program. Right now, it looks like uh, based on some of those steps that we still need to take, we will launch the program sometime in the third quarter 2021, or perhaps uh, maybe even sometime in October. So uh, stay tuned for this program and it will be uh, definitely a, a, a tool for help for struggling homeowners with delinquency on their mortgages and delinquency with property taxes and utilities. Thanks, Adam, uh, Dan. Thank you, Mary. Uh, before you go, uh, I did have a question from the chat. A person wants to know if they are on SSI, uh, would they be able to apply for this program? Um, there's a possibility, yes, they would be able to apply. All we have to determine is if there's a COVID-related hardship. So uh, perhaps you ran into increased expenses dealing with COVID um, and that caused a delinquency in your housing or your property taxes, or uh, the household themselves may have uh, had COVID and they have increased medical costs. So uh, if there is a COVID related hardship of any type, they will be able to apply for help. You bring up a good point, uh, and that is to be able to uh, tell your story, to be able to document uh, that you've had a hardship. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Yeah, we'll have an online application process, and in that, contained within that online application, we'll ask the homeowner to tell us exactly what their hardship is. You know, how is it related to COVID? And there'll be a free text uh, area that they can provide that detail to us. The documentation that we'll ask for from the homeowner is very minimal. Um, we'll ask for some income documentation and then um, information on who their current mortgage lender is, uh, property address, uh, and what they believe to be their total delinquency. Then we will reach out to that homeowner's uh, mortgage company, determine what the total delinquency is, and see if that mortgage lender will accept our funds. All of our funding will go directly to the mortgage holder or the treasurer. Uh, no funds will go directly to the uh, homeowner themselves. So uh, that way we can make sure that we resolve that uh, delinquency and then you can carry on to be a, a successful homeowner in the future. All right, thank you so much, Mary, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I want to go now uh, to bring to the mic the director of the Michigan Outreach Team uh, Mr. Edwin Harlan, who will introduce our next two special guests. Welcome, Edwin. Well, thank you, Van Adams. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce the next two speakers. First, we will have Jennifer Nash, who is the current president of MAC, which stands for the Michigan Association of County Treasurers throughout the state of Michigan. She's also the treasurer in Livingston County. And for the last 25 years, she has been working in public service. And finally, for those of you that uh, are dealing with faith-based individuals, uh, Miss Jennifer is the music director for her church. 
Let me turn it over to Jennifer Nash. She will give us a perspective from a statewide perspective of treasurers. Jennifer. Well, hi, thank you for the introduction. And I will not be singing tonight, just in case there you were questioning. Um, so on behalf of the county treasurers across the state, our message um, to anyone watching out there is that we are here to help you. Um, county treasurers are property tax foreclosure specialists. And across the state, they've developed um, resources and programs and community partnerships, all with the intent of avoiding and preventing tax foreclosure. So um, Mary's program that she just spoke about, the Homeowners Assistance Fund, is going to be, we think, a fabulous option for those of you who may be struggling to pay your property taxes. Um, but know that we already have programs out there and that reaching out to your county treasurer um, is the is the sole piece of advice I would give to you. We want to keep you in your home and um, knowing your situation and knowing the details of it allows us to best help you. Um, so I would say, um, you know, we expect that there may be some of you that are finding yourself in the predicament of not being able to pay your taxes, maybe for the first time. Um, so we just want you to know that we are here to help you reach out and we will do whatever we can for you. Thank you so much for the invitation. And, and thank you, Jennifer. And as you can see, it's been so much information. We're going to go straight to the next presenter. And his name is Eric Sabri, and he is the treasurer in Southeast Michigan for 43 municipalities in Wayne County. Eric, I'm turning it over to you. I'm, I'm not able to unmute. Uh, okay, now, thank you. Everyone, thank you, uh, Jennifer, and for speaking on behalf of all the treasurers. And uh, Mary, we are excited about the program too here in Wayne County that you just talked about. Uh, one of the things I would like to, uh, one of the things I'd like to mention in, uh, in Wayne County, we have, several, we have several payment plans available for taxpayers who are um, facing uh, tax foreclosure. One of the main programs I'd like to mention today is the Pay As You Stay program or PAYS as we refer to it. It's for individuals who are exempt because of uh, the, the income. They can become exempt from paying property taxes because of income. And the, reason, the way they qualify for this exemption is to apply at the assessor's office. If they're eligible for an exemption because of income and they have back taxes, then the pay as you stay program will help them. If they find that their 10% uh, of the taxable value of their property is greater than the amount they owe, then they will have the interest penalties and fees re, uh, canceled. But if, ten, if their base tax that they owe, the amount they owe is greater than the 10% of the taxable value, then all they would owe is 10% of that taxable value. So this program has helped over 5,000 individuals in Wayne County. And there we have about 1,200 or 1,300 more who have been approved that are going through the process. And some just haven't uh, contacted us yet. At, and uh, so this is an optional program for the county treasurers. Every county treasurer is not participating in this, but it's optional. They can participate if they want to. And, uh, and also the local treasurers have the option of participating in each municipality. In Wayne County, 18 municipalities are participating. You see on the, on the screen, the list of those who are participating. And uh, the program is working very well. I think it's, uh, I'm excited about the uh, program that Mary Townley just uh, mentioned because it's gonna help some individuals who have more income <clears throat> than the uh, exemption, pro exemption program will allow them to uh, participate in. So it'll, it'll help those 
who are making more money than the exemption, but still are struggling because of COVID or other reasons. We have uh, four other programs, the interest reduction stipulated payment agreement for owner occupants, which allows you to pay 6% interest per year on delinquent taxes instead of the statutory 18%. And we have the regular stipulated payment agreement for everyone other than owner occupants, homeowners for business owners and, and landlords. And we have an extension called the distressed owner occupant extension. This allows us to help individuals for at least one year who have some difficulty paying their taxes because of a hardship. It could be a death in the family. It could be uh, they, kept, they had COVID or they were sick or various reasons that come up if we create a hardship. Uh, some individuals uh, wait to the last minute and we encourage them not to do that because if their problem is a little complicated, we wanna have time to help them. As Jennifer mentioned, uh, we're experts at what we do, and, but we have to hear from the taxpayer. So please contact us. Uh, Treasurer.waynecounty.com is our website. You can get all the information you need there. And uh, we keep our updates there. And as soon as this MISTA program come, becomes available, you'll be hearing from us. I spoke to the Macomb County Treasurer uh, two days ago, and we want to do something together with Oakland County, Macomb County Treasurer, and the Wayne County Treasurer to promote this MISTA program. So as soon as it's available, Mary, uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you again for inviting me to say a few words of this evening. Thank you, uh, County Treasurer Eric Sabri, good friend, and uh, we really appreciate all of your hard work. And uh, I hope that you all will take advantage, see the information there on the screen uh, that has the uh, website and uh, other pertinent information. Please, please uh, take advantage of the information uh, that is available. Uh, I want now to um, introduce to you one of the bold leaders uh, for MISTA uh, who has a heart for the people and for the housing needs of our communities. Uh, so please welcome the Deputy Director of MISTA, Ms. Bernie Johnson. Welcome, Bernie. Well, thank you, Van. At this point in the program, you've heard information about programs and resources available from either DTE or MISTA to help with pressing housing issues. One of the key partners in convening today's webinar is the MISTA Outreach Team. My team and I, and I'd like to uh, introduce them now, Edwin Harlan, Van Adams, Fred Durhall, and Rosemary Myatt are totally, we are totally dedicated to providing knowledge and information about federal and state resources that can address these important housing issues, especially during these very uncertain times. Uh, given the amount of information out there, you know, we use an approach that lets us synthesize all this information from various programs and distribute that through events such as this to Michigan citizens. And what is so exciting about today's event is, our, is that it's our first collaboration with two powerhouses, Public TV and DTE. And by joining forces, our collective networks have combined <clears throat> so that information from this webinar can reach millions more citizens than we could have done on our own. And to learn just a bit more about outreach, I'd like to turn the program over now to my colleague, Edwin Harlan. Well, thank you, Bernie. Um, looks like I won't be able to turn my camera on. Oh, well, I guess I can now. Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Edwin Harlan, and I would like to thank all of the participants on the call this evening. And there's been a lot of calls into the chat. This will be recorded and we will provide it to all the individuals that are out there. We want to know what goes on. And I usually get two questions before I can get to what outreach does. First one is, what is a MISTA? MISTA is the State Housing Development Authority for the entire state of Michigan. And then the next question is, 
is what is outreach and what do they do? Well, there's the definition right there, but you've heard an acronym from AT&T that says reach out and touch. Well, similarly, outreach does the same thing, but we do more. Next slide, please. What we do is we bring together these various individuals and partners and companies like DTE, Detroit Public TV, the treasurers that you've heard from so far this evening so that we can get out to you the information that you surely need. We do that with resource fairs, we engage the community, we have workshops, and we provide the information to you that can assist you with solving some of your challenges. Next slide, please. Here's some of the initiatives that we do as an organization. We, com we compete with all of these individuals, with these companies, with the legislative and governmental engagement. And what I mean by compete is there's not enough time in the year to do each and every one of them. So we have to prioritize what type of information are we going to get out to our community, to our customers, to our key stakeholders? And that's what we've been doing over the last several years. Next slide, please. We have gone from live events, meaning where the outreach team would actually be in a facility where all of these types of people would come to get the information that we would provide, but we were sort of handicapped because we could only do it in Southeast Michigan. Well, when COVID came along, we have now responsibility for the entire state. And that's why we are doing this this evening live. We are utilizing social media, we're utilizing Detroit Public TV, our partners, and what we found out is we can reach millions now versus when we were doing it live, we may have had several hundred people. Next slide. How do we do this and how do we accomplish it? We accomplish it utilizing partners. We have financial partners, faith-based partners, educational partners. We have a plethora of partners that help us bring you the information that you need whether it's programs, whether it's information, but all of these things are for you so that you can come up with solutions for your challenges. Next slide, please. I'm gonna be bringing on Fred Durhall, who's a member of our team, who will tell you how we interface with the legislative side of the outreach team. Fred. Uh, thank you, Director Harlan, and I appreciate that. Uh, reaching our citizens and having the ability to provide them uh, with the necessary resources is one of the most important responsibilities uh, of government. And so when we speak about community uh, here at MISTA, we're dedicated to ensuring that we use every tool to provide information about our programs, uh, our resources, and partnerships across the state of Michigan. Uh, and to accomplish this goal and reaching our citizens, the MISTA Outreach Team has added key components uh, to extend our reach. So these are our special focus events and we found a new way to engage citizens across our state. One of the first components back in 2019 when I came on as the community liaison for MISTA, our director had a vision that we could expand our reach not only through our citizens and partners that we've had traditionally, but through legislative and governmental engagement uh, with elected officials and governmental officials. Uh, and so to accomplish this goal and what one of the things that we've done, we created this important aspect uh, that allowed us to reach additional citizens across the state by partnering with over 100 uh, local elected officials or officials on the federal, state, and county level 
And we've been able to increase our efforts and been able to provide this valuable information through town halls, coffee hours, phone calls, and newsletters to residents from the constituents side of our aspect when the legislators serve the citizens across the state. And so this has allowed us to take a deeper dive. And as you can see pictured, we have our whole team at MISHTA from the Detroit office with our great governor of our state, Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, we partnered with Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, uh, US Senator Debbie Stabenow and Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor, I'm sorry, Garland Gilchrist, just to name a few. Uh, but we have basically partnered with legislators from every county within our state. Uh, we partner with county commissioners, city council members, and this is a way that we take a deeper dive to reach our folks governmentally as well as legislatively. There was also an untapped aspect that we had not utilized before. And so for the first time, Mr. decided to take it a step further and partner with our faith-based community. This allowed us to accomplish many things. We realized we had to diversify our efforts and meet people where they are. And so for example, we had partnered with Michigan's faith-based organizations for the first time in history. And through this effort in person, we hosted one of our largest housing resource fairs ever in the history of Mishta. Uh, Mishta. Uh, and after COVID-19 hit, we questioned how would we be able to continue this outreach and keep up some of the success and programs and dissemination of information that we had. So we hosted our first virtual faith-based housing resource fair and had over 1,200 folks from around the state on the call. And we were able to provide such resources as you've heard, for, uh, heard about tonight, such as energy assistance or eviction diversion programs to help folks who face evictions or information to help folks become homeowners or just renter information in general. But partnering with these faith-based uh, these faith-based institutions has been instrumental and helped a new way to engage coming to fruition as we push to get the information to our citizens. With that, I will turn it gladly back over to Mr. Van Adams, who will let you know further what else we have in store for you tonight. Van, but thank you, Fred. Appreciate that and. Thank you, Bernie and Edwin, uh, for giving that overview on the Michigan uh, outreach team. Uh, before we uh, get ready to close out this portion and go into our special Q&A segment, I want to let our uh, viewing audience know that this presentation will be available on Mr.'s YouTube page. That's right, it'll be available on Mr.'s YouTube page uh, after this event, so you can look for that, as well as uh, if you are a registrant for this uh, event tonight, uh, we will also make sure that you get a copy of this uh, presentation. So you have several ways where you can go back and listen to the presentation uh, tonight. We want you to have the valuable information that's been shared uh, in this program tonight. So uh, I, I hope that this program has helped you in some way. I see that the questions are still coming in uh, and I want you to make sure you put that question in our Q&A. And if you're on Facebook, uh, you can put that in the comments section. But I want to thank uh, Mr. Outreach Team, our DTE and Detroit Public Television partners, as well as uh, Mr. Communications Team working behind the scenes to bring you this valuable information. Well, we've come to the end of this portion of our program, but we look forward to coming to you soon for another opportunity to share valuable information and resources. But for those of you uh, with a burning question or want to learn a little bit more, we have something for you because we are about to segue into our special Q&A segment. Uh, you're going to see a slide uh, here in just a moment that has our contact information of some of the various uh, individuals that have been a part of this program. Take this information down, take a screenshot of it. We want you to be able to reach out and uh, connect uh, with us and with some of the presenters uh, from today because we want you to get this valuable information. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, keep in mind that our partner, Detroit Public Television, is streaming this event on OneDetroitPBS.org website. That's One Detroit, O-N-E, the word Detroit, PBS.org. That's their website. And you can also watch the Q&A segment there as well. So uh, with that, uh, let's get started with our Q&A. All right, let's go to our first question. Of course, we had a lot of great information about uh, the COVID emergency uh, relief uh, program. And so uh, our first question, can you apply for CIRA if you have already applied? And we'll pose that to uh, Kelly Rose. Can you apply to CIRA if you have already applied? Well, we can only assist you one time with the Sarah program. So if you've already applied, um, we don't you know, direct you to go back and apply again um, within the program. Um, so, but you can, if you've already been assisted, you could potentially get a future three months of rental assistance. Um, so, so that is possible. But if you're, if you're waiting on your application to be processed the first time, um, it doesn't help to go in and, re and uh, you know, fill out another application that doesn't speed up the process or anything. Um, so we'd ask, um, you can use the SARA contact list to find the service agency in your area um, to give them a call um, if you feel like, you know, you, you need to get, you know, more follow-up um, on your application, but don't apply again. Okay, great. Stay right there, Kelly, because they're coming fast and furious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one person wants to know if you were denied, can you appeal? Um, if, if you were denied, um, yes, you can uh, contact the service agency to get more information on the reason for your denial. Um, and potentially if the denial was because you were over income, if your income situation changes in the future, you can reapply. Um, and also we're sometimes denying applications if they're incomplete and if after repeated um, reach outs for information over a 30 day time period, um, the tenant is not responsive, um, those applications will be denied, but then you can definitely reapply um, in the future if you're denied for the unresponsive incomplete application. All right, great, thank you. Uh, my colleague, Fred Durhall, I'm gonna ask if you could uh, open your camera up and help me with some of the questions. We wanna make sure that we can get to as many folks as we can. Uh, the next question here, if you are in the Upper Peninsula, uh, do these uh, programs apply for folks there? Yes, they do. So the SARA program is statewide. Um, so every single county is covered by the program. You can go to michigan.gov slash CERA uh, to learn more about the program. Click the green apply now button. Um, and we have local providers that are up in the Upper Peninsula, the community action agencies that are processing applications up in the UP. Um, so, and they're you know, providing payments for utilities to the local UP, um, you know, energy companies. So yes, you can get full assistance from Sarah anywhere in the state. Speaking of providers, Kelly, I think that's a great segue to the next question. Uh, there's a question that, is it possible for a nonprofit to become a service provider for Sarah? Um, so to do that, um, if you can please drop your contact information into either the, the Q&A or to the chat, um, we, we can you know, talk to you about that. Um, right now, we have contracted with about 50 uh, nonprofits across the state. Um, and we started off with um, you know, service providers that were identified by either the city or the county or ones that we had um, you know, really you know, established relationships with, with our homeless services programs. Um, so yes, please drop your contact information um, in and we can, um, we can get you more information on that. This next question is an energy related question. So I wanna pose this to Sakina. Uh, it is, uh, can you extend the time before being removed from the shutoff plan? Thank you for that question, Van. So you can't get an extension on that, but I would encourage you to contact us if you're on a shutoff protection plan, because it is possible that there are other assistance programs that might be better suited to you, um, might have better payment plan amounts such as LSP. So if you're in that situation and worried about 
um, really being able to make your SPP payments or your shutoff protection plan payments, please contact us to see what other options you have. All right, thank you. Fred, I'm gonna go to you and then I'm gonna come back to Sakina with another question. Okay, Here, here's another question about utilities. Uh, but this one goes a little bit more for uh, internet assistance. Uh, they wanted to know for the internet assistance with some of the resources that were provided tonight, do they use the same website? Uh, so for the Sarah program, um, to be eligible for that program, you have to be behind on either your rent or your utilities. And that really just includes the, the core utilities like electricity, um, you know, home heating, those utilities. Um, but we can give you assistance with your internet bills. Um, so it's a $300 internet stipend um, that's part of the Sarah program to help you pay uh, for your internet. So as part of the application process, it will ask you for what utilities and internet you know, assistance you would like assistance with, and you'll upload a copy of your bills. Um, so if you're using your smartphone, um, you could just take a picture. Um, you, you just use your camera on your phone to take a picture of your bills and upload that as part of the application process. And if you do include a copy of your internet statement, um, you will be able to get that $300 internet stipend as a part of the Sarah program. All right, great. I'm going to uh, pose this next question to Sakina, and then I see Mr. Harlan uh, has jumped on, so perhaps he has a question. But for Sakina, this next question, uh, the person has applied for CIRA. Uh, they have a shutoff notice, and there is no sign of a hold from the program. I guess they're asking what, what should they do? That's a great question, Van, and really glad that we had the opportunity to address that. So with the partners who are assisting with SARA applications, uh, they do have the ability to put hold on the account. Um, but in the event that you have a shutoff notice or you're concerned that your hold hasn't been placed, uh, you can contact DTE Energy and we can assist uh, with getting that hold placed on your account um, to make sure that you are protected until your application is processed. All right, thank you very much, Sakina. Uh, You're welcome. We'll go to uh, Mr. Harlan. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that you This question in. is for Shakina also. I think it goes a little further than the previous ones. It says, if my utilities are shut off, will the program help get them back on? So I wanna make sure I understand the question. As I understand it, the question is, if you're already disconnected and you've applied for Sarah, does the fact that you've applied for Sarah uh, get you reinstated or get you restored? Um, and I would say that is not the case necessarily. It doesn't automatically get you restored. What I would say is contact us so we can look at your account uh, to see what options are available to you. Um, you know, and, and make sure that we're moving you with other energy assistance or to see what applications or processes that DT has directly. Not, but definitely just because you've applied and you're waiting and you're already disconnected won't necessarily uh, get you automatically restored. And we have a back to you, Van. All right, thank yeah. you, Ed. Uh, let's go to Fred next. Uh, yeah, we have another question. I think this will go to Kelly. Uh, says, my landlord refused to accept Sarah. Now I have to leave by the 23rd and have to move with a relative or be homeless. What, can, what, assist, what assistance can I receive from this point? Um, so if you're not a current leaseholder, so if you're experiencing homelessness or you've recently had to move or you're living with friends or family, you are eligible to apply for the SARA program and to get three months of future rental assistance and help with your security deposit. Um, so you can go to michigan.gov slash Sarah um, to get more information on that. And you're probably going to want to call the agency on your Sarah contact list and they can get you more help in terms of, um, you know, potentially getting you moved into a hotel um, if that's what's needed for your housing safety. Um, so we really encourage you to call. Um, don't just try to apply online. Call the service agency. Um, talk to them about your situation so that they can help you with your housing safety. All right, I'll go next with this question. Do you help with land contracts? This can be to you, Kelly, or to the others as well. 
So for the SARA program, we specifically are unfortunately not allowed to help with land contracts. Um, it's within the federal regulations that it has to be a rental situation. Uh, but it is my understanding that the homeowner assistance fund program that will be coming out in a couple months time will be able to assist with land contract holders. So, um, so that will be coming out soon. Um, but unfortunately with the SARA program, um, we, we have to deny people who are living with a land contract. Yeah, that's correct, uh, Kelly. Uh, we've put in our proposal for the homeowner assistance fund that we will assist to individuals that own the property through a land contract. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to our panelists, or rather, uh, our Mr. Leaders, Fred or Mr. Harlan, do you have a question? Yes, I have one. Uh, this is an interesting question. Maybe Kelly and DTE can chime in on this. It says, can you share if there is any conflict with DTE and Sarah? I had heard that families could not be on a payment plan and still be eligible for Sarah utility assistance. Can you clarify this so we can advise families? Um, no, being on a payment plan does not um, exclude you from the SARA program. Um, so you could, you should definitely direct people to apply um, if they're behind on either their rent or utilities. If they're entered into a payment plan, that's fine. We can still pay, you know, the balance. We would just look at, you know, what are the balance of the funds due, um, you know, on your energy bills and, and that can get paid um, whether you're on a utility um, or, you know, an energy assistance plan or not. So uh, we, you know, please encourage people to apply. Great. All right, let's go to Mr. Harlan next. Yes, um, I think this would go to uh, Kelly. Uh, the individual is indicating that if they don't have or their phone gets shut off and they are homeless, then what is the process? How do they contact or how do they get in touch with all of this information? And they're homeless. Well, in that situation, um, we would still need to direct you to call the service providers on the SARA contact list. Um, so we would ask you to, you know, you know, reach out to friends or family that can get you that information if you're not able to get onto the internet yourself. Um, to be able to call the service agency that's on the SARA contact list, you can also call 211 um, to get emergency housing assistance and get connected to agencies um, that, that can help you with that. All right, my next question is to DTE. Does the Home Energy Consultation Program offer assistance for tenants when the landlord or property owner refuses to participate? Um, Van, I would have to get back to you to get those details, but I would also encourage anyone who's trying to get more information to go to that section of our website, but I can take that question and get it back to everyone. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Fred, we'll go to you next. Yes, uh, so uh, two questions, I'll just put them together. Uh, someone wants to know, uh, can you get a rebate for freezers and fridges, refrigerators? And the second question is appliance recycling, is that available for air conditioners as well? And who are you posing that to, Fred? Oh, I'm sorry, that's to, that's to that's to DTE. All right. I'm sorry, Fred. Can you can you clarify the question? Yeah. So the first question, uh, the person wanted to know: Can you get a rebate through the program for uh, freezers and refrigerators? And then the second question: uh, Is there a, a recycle? Is appliance recycling available for air conditioners? So the rebate is for refrigerators and freezers. And I'm not certain about the AC. Uh, so I would encourage you to go to that dteenergy.com slash recycle rebates to confirm that um, because I don't know for certain if the, if the AC is included. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Harlan, we'll go to you next. I think this one should go to Shakina also. Uh, it says, I keep getting denied LSP because of usage, but I have all energy efficient bulbs and appliances, but I live in a high crime area. So I keep lights on around my home and porch. Um, 
to light one. And what can I do? I can't afford my current utility bill, even on shutoff protection. So what I would say to that without being able to see the details of this account is that there is an aspect of LSP that uh, requires you to have your consumption within certain limits. Um, but without being able to look into this account and really understand what they've done, have they had a home energy consultation? Have they come in? I know we say energy efficient bulbs. Are there other opportunities in the home to make it more efficient? Um, it's hard for me to give a specific answer, but I do think that if they contact us, we can uh, look at their specific account. Um, we can look at the usage on the account, look at the usage patterns, things like that, determine if it's a certain time of year and really be able to give them um, more direct guidance on what options are available to them. All right, let's go to the next question. I'll, I'll ask this one. Um, I believe it's a serial related. What if someone got help in the city of Westland in rental assistance last year is the CIRA program different? Um, it, it could be different. It very likely is a different program and we would be able to assist you. We would just need to get more information from you as to what months of assistance you received from another program, just to make sure that we're not duplicating that assistance. Um, so when you're filling out the application and the landlord um, is supposed to be providing a ledger of, you know, the rent that was due and how much was paid and how much you're behind, um, we would want to see that the assistance that you previously received last year was, was annotated on that ledger just to make sure that we're not um, duplicating that benefit that was previously um, you know, given. But we can help you with the SARA program if you were through the eviction diversion program last year or other sorts of rental assistance programs. We can help you for your more current uh, rental arrears that haven't already been paid for with another program. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Mr. Harlan, you're up next if you have a question. Um, I do have one for, I guess this would be going to Shakina. Uh, I have a shutoff bill for DTE Energy. I was in the LSP program and kicked out in June. I had to apply for the SARE program and I'm waiting for a response. Will I be able to get help? So oh, Ed, I think that question is probably for Kelly and I can't answer as to whether or not they'll get help um, with Sarah. Um, what I do know is if they qualified initially for the LSP program, then it sounds like, and depending on their hardship, sounds like they might be eligible. Um, but again, it's really hard for me to answer specific questions without having the account information. So they should definitely reach out and call us. Yeah and, we would yeah, and we would definitely encourage them to apply for Sarah. Um, so really, when in doubt, apply for the program and the service agency will determine your eligibility um, and, and we'll, we'll go through all of that. But please, if, if you're in doubt of whether or not you, you qualify or not, please apply. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Fred, before I come to you, let me slide this question in right quick. And that is, uh, will Sarah help pay back taxes? Uh, Sarah cannot pay for taxes. So Sarah can only pay for rent, um, utilities, and, you know, the internet bill, you know, the internet stipend. So, um, but the funds that do go to the landlord, um, you know, as part of the, the rent uh, can then be used for the landlord to help pay their tax bill. Uh, but we can't actually pay taxes with the program. Thank you. Fred, we'll go to you next. Okay, uh, this is a question that is not related to Sarah, but sometimes we get these questions about Section 8. Uh, and so this says, how do I apply for Section 8 for me and my son, who is quadriplegic? How do I go about applying for Section 8? Um, so you can go to Mich Mishta's website, so it's michigan.gov slash mshda. Um, to learn more about the open waiting lists that we have um, in the program. So we do our waiting lists on a county by county basis. 
Um, so you'll you'll just want to, to go to our website. Um, there's a, a little waiting list icon that will say, you know, basically it's like a little picture of a house you'll want to click on uh, to get to the HCV portion of our website um, to learn more about it and to look at the open waiting list that we have right now. Um, so if the waiting list is closed, um, then you, you can't apply in that area. But if the waiting lists are open, um, then, then you would be able to apply. Uh, Kelly, while we have you, you know, there are so many people uh, that are utilizing uh, the what we call Section 8 program. And many people don't know that you guys also offer a rent to own uh, portion of that. Can you talk a little bit about that program? Sure. Um, yeah, we have what's called, we call it key to own. So if you have a housing choice voucher or section eight, as it's you know otherwise known um, with Mishta, you can use that voucher to become a homeowner. And really, instead of paying rental payments to your landlord, it helps, pay, helps you pay your mortgage. Um, so you can also get more information on that program on Mishta's website. So it's michigan.gov slash MSHDA. So if you have a Mishta voucher and you're interested in becoming a homeowner, uh, we can help you through that process and get you connected with a lender and with a realtor um, to help you in the, the homeowner you know, searching process. All right. Great. Uh, Mr. Harlan, you look like you got a burning question there. Well, uh, this individual has a burning question, and I'm going to share it with Kelly Rose. Um, she indicates that uh, she didn't upload any internet or utility bills, but when she called Sarah program, they asked her for her DTE energy account numbers. Um, they, they were likely um, trying to assess if you are behind on your bills, if you do want help with your energy bills. We know sometimes people, um, maybe they just overlook that portion of the application and they don't upload um, their energy bills. Um, so if you want help with your utility bills, we do have to know what the account number is so that we can look it up um, and, and you know, do the payment process to DTE. Um, so if you would like help with your utilities, um, you, you do either need to upload, um, you know, your, a copy of your bill that has your account number and, you know, your specifics on it, or through the, you know, basically emailing back and forth with the caseworker who's working on your program, you could exchange that information so that you can give them the, the proper information so they can look up your account in DTE system and be able to make that payment. Um, and, and just one thing on Sarah, when, when you're approved for the program, you'll get an email that will give you all of the specifics that will tell you exactly how much in rental arrears assistance you're getting um, for the back rent, how much in future rental assistance you're getting, as well as how much utility assistance is being paid on your behalf. Because in many cases, um, you know, the, the payments are going directly to the, to the utility companies. So we will let you know specifically how much is getting paid on your behalf. And you'll be able to check, um, you know, check back in a couple of weeks to see that that, you know, that amount of funding was applied towards your account. All right, great. Uh, listen, folks, we have about 10 minutes uh, to go because we started a little late. Uh, so we're going to try to cover as many of your questions as we possibly can. Fred, I'm going to come to you next, but let me try to slip in this question. Uh, and this is for Sakina. Uh, will we be able to apply for LSP today? Uh, great question. I would love for you to apply for LSP today. Um, whether or not you can apply, here's what I would say. If you have not applied for an SCR in the current fiscal year, which started on October 1st, then do that um, because that would be the starting point. Uh, what is an SCR? That is state emergency relief. And again, you can go to my bridges or you can call DTE at 800-477-4747. We'd be happy to help you fill out a state emergency relief application. That is a starting point um, to get you through that process. You can also contact one of the agencies uh, if you're interested in learning more about LSP. All right, thank you so much. Sakina, Fred, we'll come to you next. This is an interesting question. I don't know if it's been answered yet, but it says, do you have any advice for accessing these programs for residents who inherited their homes mm -hmm. and debt from deceased family members? Wow. 
So the, the future homeowner assistance fund may be able to help them if they've been legally uh, deeded the property through uh, maybe an estate. Uh, so uh, I would advise uh, individuals in that situation to keep an eye out for when we launch the homeowner assistance fund and our guidelines will be posted. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to apply, um, especially if you were granted the property through an estate. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Ed, we're gonna come to you in just a minute. Uh, let me slip in this question. I think is a combination of DTE and uh, Sarah here. Uh, the question is, part of my CIRA application included DTE along with rental assistance. My landlord refused to accept CIRA and my application was denied. Can I reapply just for DTE? Uh, yes, they, they can definitely reapply. Um, and it's one thing that they should probably call the agency on the Sarah contact list to get more information um, because uh, someone should not be denied from the program solely because their landlord is not participating with the program. Um, so there could have been other, you know, incomplete aspects of the application. You know, I'm not sure, obviously, by not looking specifically at the case. Um, but no one should be a, should be denied from the Sarah program solely because their landlord isn't participating. Um, so um, they they can reach back out to the service agency or or they can you know just start reapplying again. But um, I, I would definitely encourage you to reach out and to to apply again. And you make a good point, uh, Kelly. Before we go to Edwin, is that there are these service agencies out there that are actually helping uh, us to process the applications and that people can get in touch with them once they uh, complete an application. Is that is that correct? Yes. Um, so if you go to uh, the website, it's so on michigan.gov slash Sarah, there's a Sarah contact list. It's about a five page PDF and it'll go through county by county. And then Detroit Highland Park and Hamtramck have their own you know, specific area. Um, and there's the lead service provider that's listed um, you know, in that area. And sometimes like in Oakland County, there's three providers running the program in Detroit. There's two um, in Macomb. There are two, you know, two that are that are doing the program. But the lead agency is listed on that contact info and you can call them uh, to get more information on your program, you know, on your application. And they can get you connected directly to you know, the caseworker that is um, you know, managing your case. You can also reach out directly to if you've received um, emails. Most of the time, the service agencies, when they're starting to process your case, they'll be sending you an email to introduce themselves and to give you their contact information. Um, so you, you may have also received that too. And if you have, you could reach directly out to the caseworker um, that's working on your case. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, let's go to you next, Mr. Harlan. And I think this one goes to Shakina. It says, if my husband is no longer in the home and the DTE bill is in his name, can I still receive help on the DTE bill since me and the kids are in the home? Um, great question. I think the best solution in that case would be to call us so we can get the account in your name and move forward from there with uh, any assistance options that are available to you. We have a department that can handle you getting that transfer. Thank you. All right, let's go to Fred next. Uh, here's a question, uh, and I'm assuming that uh, this participant has been denied, Sarah, but it says, uh, outreach team, Sarah can't help me. Is there anything that protects low-income individuals or assists them with relocation? Uh, as you stated, state representatives and governors uh, should be brought uh, to this attention if Sarah can't help them. Are there any programs available uh, that can help looking for housing or either vouchers and that are not accepted uh, in areas that are unsafe for a single disabled individual? Can anyone on the panel help? I can take that one. Um, so help with relocation, um, you know, so moving from one place to another, it, it's, we really don't have any kind of funding source that's directly 
um, tied to helping people move to another place. Um, but I would um, ask you, you can probably, you can reach out to 211, talk to them about your situation. They can help you get connected to local service providers in your area um, that might be able to link you up with other programs that can be beneficial for you to help you pay, you know, other bills or, you know, really just, you know, provide you other supports that can hopefully help your help your situation. Uh, but it is very difficult. We, most service programs do not have funds available to be able to help you move. All right, thank you, Kelly. With yep. the questions are still coming in. We only have about four more minutes here, uh, but we have a Facebook question uh, and it's uh, addressed to Sakina. Me and my husband are on disability. Can we get help with our energy bill? Thank you for the question, Van. Uh, I would say definitely call us without being able to look at your account uh, and see what your situation is. It's hard for me to say. Um, but if you call us, we can analyze the account, determine what's available to you. If you have any um, medical aid or anything like that that you need, we can get you connected. But the best thing to do is call us so we can look at your specific situation. I know that that's my pat answer, but it really is true. Everyone has an individual circumstance and we work really hard uh, to get you connected to the plan that makes sense for you or direct you to the right energy assistance. And that's a great point, uh, Sakina. When, when the person calls this number, is this number available 24 hours or is there a certain time period that need to reach out to you? So our normal business hours are eight to six, Monday through Saturday. So if they contact us through those uh, times, we can assist with any questions. All right, great. Uh, before we go to uh, Fred next, uh, he's pointed out a good good aspect here, and that is that we're going to go through the many, many questions that uh, have been submitted tonight, and we're going to create what's called our frequently asked questions and, and, and get those back out to our, our viewing audience uh, to make sure that we're doing our best to try to answer some of your many questions. So thank you for that, Fred, and we'll go back to you. Thank you, Van. Uh, that is an important aspect, and, and our team works diligently to try to get uh, every everyone's questions answered even after this program. Uh, this is a question I don't know if has been answered yet, but I see a couple of questions that are similar. It says, will you be reimbursed for payment that is made to DTE while waiting on the application to be approved by Sarah? Hmm. Hmm. Um, no, they wouldn't necessarily be reimbursed. I mean, the, the Sarah program can pay um, the amount of you know, your utility arrears plus either a $300 or $500 future credit towards your bill. Um, so when they're processing um, you know, the, you know, your case, they're going to look up in DTE system how much your total arrears are and be able to, you know, within the certain caps that, that I had um, in my presentation between um, $1,500 and $2,500 are our caps depending on your household size. Um, they'll be able to pay your arrears plus either $300 or $500 towards your future energy expenses. Thank you, Kelly. Well, Mr. Harlan, you actually have the last question. We're unfortunately up against our time frame, uh, and uh, we, we, we have to cut it off. But as, as Fred mentioned, we will uh, have our frequently asked questions uh, sent back out to our audience, and they can view us on uh, Mr. YouTube page if they want to go back and review the information that was shared tonight. So we'll give you the honor of giving us the last question. And thank you, Van. That's great information for the folks that are still on the line. I think this question goes to Kelly and Mary Townley because I think both programs reside in both folks' jurisdiction. It says, I have a Section 8 voucher and qualified for the key ownership program, but they have not contacted me yet. And I've been in my place three years now. How do I get information about key to ownership program? Um, so uh, you can go to Mishda's website. So michigan.gov slash MSHDA um, and look for the contact information related to the rental assistance and homeless solutions area. Um, if you call that number, you'll be able to get connected to the staff uh, that work on the key to own program. Uh, so please go to the website um, and you know, let them know that you're interested in key to own. And um, one of those staff persons will get back a hold of you. So Great. the Section 8 voucher has no impact. 
Well, you do have to have a MISHDA Section 8 voucher to participate in the Key to Own program. Excellent. So um, if you have a Section 8 voucher with some other housing commission, um, you would need to contact that housing commission to see if they do a home ownership program. But specifically, if you have a MISHDA voucher, um, the Key to Own program is connected with that. Thank you, Kelly. Well, that's it for us, folks. Uh, again, we want to thank you for uh, joining us for this special bonus 30-minute uh, segment. Uh, and uh, we hope that we've been able to answer as many of your questions as we possibly could. Uh, I want to thank our Mr. Outreach team, as well as our DTE partner and Detroit Public Television and our communications team who works behind the scene and all of those uh, who have had a part in making this uh, event successful. We look forward to joining you again soon with some valuable information and resources uh, that we want to make sure you have uh, here in the state of Michigan. So with that, good night everybody and look to seeing you very soon.